if we put uh, if we give an, an, an uh, longer pulse wide that means 300 microseconds it, it could have an impact it could have an impact on your PTC count huh? Huh? and we do now is it will be stimulating first train of four titanic stimulation and now the post titanic count is starting and you will see now that we get a lot longer answers because the pulse wide is 300 microseconds huh? and now we get a full answer of, of 1415 mm -hmm. So be aware if you increase your pulse wide. If we put your pulse wide at 200 and we repeat the post-titanic count, as we will do in a moment, Okay, now we do at 200 microseconds. A train of four that is a zero. We do a titanic stimulation. And now we start counting the number of, of uh, post titanic counts. Now we see if one. At the so the difference between an, 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 a moderate block and an intense block could be just because of the fact of, of the power you give. Um, the pulse wide you required to get sufficient answer at the calibration phase is therefore that important. So if you use 300 microseconds, it's something that is required at the induction, at the start off when you didn't use any neuromuscular blockers because otherwise, because of obesity, you need a higher power. But if you would change this setting during the procedure, you can change an intense block in measurement to a moderate block. <laughs> And therefore, it's important to be aware what your pulse wide requirement really is. Most of the time, 200 microns is sufficient. Exceptional in the obese patient, you need to go to 300. You have to do it at the calibration phase or in infants to go to 100, uh, what you also have to do at the calibration. Okay. Mm -hmm.